Welcome everybody to Share Your Light. I'm here, we took a little break, but I'm back. And I have a really special guest today, uh, Cara Presley of Red Table Talk Virginia, and also is the career cheerleader. So you're yes. in for a, a special treat today. So really quick, before we hop in, everybody go ahead and share the video on your page so that everybody can tune in to what we're gonna be sharing today. So give everybody a quick second. I'm gonna reshare it to my page. Share it to a couple of groups. Mm-hmm. There we go. All right, y'all, we're ready. So welcome, Cara. Thank you Thank so much you. for taking a minute to be with us today. Absolutely. I wouldn't be anywhere else. I appreciate you and your patience. And, <laughs> and we finally got it together. You know, things happen. The stars align when they're supposed to. So I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm glad to be here tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, you said, you know, we had, you were patient with me. And I guess we'll just hop right in there. We're talking about healing and self-care today. Mm -hmm. And I talked to, to, earlier today, I posted on my page that we really have to normalize being okay with taking mental health breaks. Right. And last week when we were supposed to go live, I messaged you and, you know, I started the message several times because I felt so bad to, you know, back out. And I was right. like, you know, you know, it's OK to say that I'm sick or I feel like I'm having the flu. But why can't we just ever normalize being OK because I'm having anxiety today yeah. or I'm not in a good mental space today? And yeah. then that creates more guilt and it makes the anxiety worse because in society it's not acceptable at this point for us to talk about those things. Right. So let's talk about it. Right. Listen, we're at a place now. It's 2020. Um, if you've survived all the way through 2020 and watching this today, then you know you've already made it through a lot. Just being here, right? So it, it's a good time to just be transparent. There's no need to lie. Um, there's no need to perpetrate. If you weren't feeling your best self, then it's time to reschedule. Like 2020, I think, has allowed a lot of people to take the time and rest. Um, take the mm -hmm. time and realize where their lives were moving too fast when they should have been moving slow and vice versa. Like you, you're realizing now what's in alignment, what needs to be sped up, what do I need to work on? Where can I be my best self? A, a lot of us were pretending like we were good with the schedules we had. And then, you know, we were good with the schools and now everything shut down and now you got to do it on your own. So it's time to redefine, realign and get yourself together. So always be transparent. That's the first key to anything. All of the things we're going to discuss tonight. Right, right. Yeah. And like you say, 2020, there's been a lot of loss. I think I saw a post today. You said like you've posted RIP so many times this year. And yeah. it's just, everybody's grieving. It's every week this month to the point that when someone else passed away, it was just another hit. And me and my girlfriend discuss all the time. I don't know if I'm numb. Or if I'm just handling it better, I don't know if I haven't processed it yet. So in all areas, everyone just needs to slow down and really sit with what you're feeling. Um, one of the things is the career cheerleader I always talk about is how we say, you know, I need to get through it. I need to, no, I need to get over it. I need to get over it. Get over it. Get over this. You don't need to just get over things. We need to get through things. What was it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Uh, what do you want to keep happening? What do you want to never repeat again? You know, right. so don't just get over it, get through it, feel your way through it. We have to right now. Absolutely. And stop hiding, you know, or putting on this front, like you say, perpetrating, because I'll mm -hmm. have moms text me all the time and say, how do you, you know, or I'm not where you are. You're doing so well. And I say, look, I just learned how to move with the pain, That's to it. carry the pain. But that does not mean that the pain is not there. Right. Um, right. Or like the meme says, you know, just because you can carry the load doesn't mean it's not heavy. You know, exactly. A lot of us have had loads that you're just getting comfortable with the load you have. And then here's another ton of bricks, you know, so we're having to slowly get through these things and um, you have to assess. Definitely self -assess. Right, right, right. And I see a comment here and I appreciate that comment. It says we okay. have to stay in constant prayer and we do. Yes. We do yes. have to stay in constant prayer. Absolutely. Well, let me, I want to tap. But it. at the same time, I want to say, okay, go ahead. No, you no, go first. first. No, no, go ahead, Cara. I was going to say, you know, we, I, 2020 is a good year to change the narrative on some things that you say to yourself. And we have a lot of cliches, you know, stay in prayer, girl. Okay, I'll stay in prayer. But what does that but. look like? What does that look like? Like for me, staying in prayer is I'm in constant conversations with God all day. 
some people may see it as I'm in constant conversations with myself. You are God. He's a piece of you. We're only standing upright in his body because of his grace. You know what I mean? So have those constant conversations with yourself. Am I moving too fast? Do I even like this? You know, should I say no? Should I say yes? Staying in prayer is not just always on your knees. It's not just at right. your bedside. It's not just in the morning and it's not just at night. This is an all day thing. You know, some people, like you said, are grieving. We're moment to moment. We're minute to minute in some situations. So keep yourself lifted. Absolutely. And when you say, you know, we have to be careful with the cliches because sometimes we say stay in prayer, but that gives somebody like, okay, with me and losing my son, people would say that as if, okay, that's going to make it better. It doesn't make it better. It doesn't take the pain away. It, it is hurt. something that I need to do. So we have to be careful with the cliches and how that makes a person feel again yes. with the guilt of what they're feeling as if yes. you didn't pray hard enough because you're still feeling that way. Right. Well, and at the same time, it's also sometimes an easy out. I'll pray for you, girl. Did you ever really go back and sit down and pray for that person? I mean, have them on your spirit, have a two minute conversation with God and about what you want for their life. Like we say these things as an easy out. That's why if you know me, the career cheerleader, when you meet me, you're going to say, how are you? And I'm going to say, I'm successful. OK, I answer that way because it allows me to pause, really assess how I'm feeling. And when I say successful, I know internally it's whatever my level of success was for that day. I may have needed to lay in the bed all day with Netflix. I might have had to get my rest. I might have had to go do five interviews, but I'm at my level of successful for the day. And I didn't have to lie to you about it and say I was okay. You know, so really assessing who you are, what you are, what you're feeling at all times. And let's talk about that when you say people ask how you're doing, because I feel like sometimes I was just talking to my husband a little bit ago and we're not even caring about other human beings enough to pause and do a check-in before we jump into the business right. sometimes. Right, 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 right. You know, just really saying, how are you today? And and having the person respond and you listen. You know, how many times have you said, how you doing? I'm good. And the person keeps on with their conversation. It, this is not a probing response. You know, this is not a, a telephone guide. This is a true conversation. And as you know, I'm a speaker. Clearly, I'm talking tonight. Um, but you do have to stop and want to listen. And sometimes right. people won't tell you how they're feeling because they know the other person doesn't want to listen. They don't want to be a burden. But don't stop being who you are and feeling what you feel and expressing how you feel. Right, right, right. right. Well, let's talk about a little bit about, we jumped in right, right into okay. it. Let's talk about Cara. Who is, who is Cara Presley? Listen, Cara Presley is, she's an amazing woman. Listen, she's a whole new woman. You know, I feel like, I'm at a place, I'm 38, you know, and I'm in a space of just continuously, I want to be better every day. You know, I feel like when you're in your 20s, you have these goals and you want to, I want to be this, I want to be that. Well, I became certain things that when I was younger, but now I just want to be better. I want to continue learning. So I am an up and coming author, stay tuned, uh, speaker, international speaker. I've been to Canada, Jamaica, I had a world a women's empowerment cruise with Line Dance Press. Shout out to you, Carlos. Um, you know, I've, I've done so many things and right now I'm also, uh, into the world of social media and helping people manage their social media and, and just really maximizing the DM. We can talk about that later if you want to, but like real connections and being transparent is so important in social media. So, so that's hey, why let's I hop into it. You, you, yeah. Let's talk about social media because as the career cheerleader, you help. Okay, let's stop and pause and say, Carter Presley, Red Table Talk Virginia yes. has over 90,000 members in the group. Listen. How did you grow a group to over 90,000 people? It, listen, you know what? Red Table Talk, shout out to my Red Table Talk family. I know you're tuning in. It has been more of a blessing for me than I ever expected it to be. Um, and it all started with, you know, Jada Pinkett Smith. She started these conversations with her mother and her, her daughter uh, and also her mother, grandmother, granddaughter, of course. And they were just authentic conversations. So fast forward, I go to join the group because I want to support. And I'm like trying to put up great posts and no one it's not getting approved, girl. I was like, well, what? I had something good to say. And it, I just wasn't feeling felt. I wasn't heard. You know, and I decided, you know, well, forget it. Maybe I can't connect with people all over the world. Maybe I'll just connect with people right here in my hometown. I got some good girlfriends. We're watching the show. Let's do a Red Table Talk RVA. And we started with two members. Shout out to Chantel, Dr. Chantel Chambliss. She was the first member. Um, I was like, girl, can I start this group? You want to be my member? She was like, sure. <laughs> we start the group. 
one person goes to 40 and then 300 and then I look up and it's like 35,000 people in the group. Now, ideally, initially, they were looking for Jada, but actually, we got the attention of Jada. She reached out to us. We started working with the Red Table Talk team, and by we, I mean I. Uh, we helped them with some campaigns. Um, I helped them uh, launch a few things, and it's just been a great partnership, and they also did an analysis of our page and said, you know, we are continuously growing even when the show is not uh, going on. So my goal was to just post things that I know I needed uh, post things that would inspire me continuously and and other women and a few men feel the same. We have about 10 good men in the group. Shout out to y'all. We appreciate it. <laughs> so let's talk about the, you know, the, the power of social media right now mm. in 2020 because mm. th- there's a lot of things that have been put on hold. Like I was even talking to somebody earlier and I have a court date tomorrow and it's oh. on Zoom. You know, everything is Girl. on Zoom now. So the world is flat basically to where we can reach all corners of the earth with right. the power of social media. So what tips do you have for someone or what understanding of social media has helped you maximize your reach? Right. Um, one of the main things, and this is probably just the key to anything you do, um, is to just be transparent. Um, as I work with different clients and people who say, you know, I want a video, I want to promote my business. Um, can you interview me? Um, you know, can you help me put together a, a graphic that just describes what I'm feeling in this quote? As I put those things together, I'm like, I know you said you wanted orange, but you said your favorite color and the brand color is blue. Like align it with how you really feel. It doesn't have to meet a trend. Uh, you know, I, this is a red table talk. Well, my page is a red table talk page, but I don't post everything that's red. You know, like I post what's authentic to me in the moment. People want to see that there's a a person behind the business who's running this. Who, what child am I feeding? You know what I mean? Um, every time mm-hmm. I, I used to make candles before I, I ventured into the public speaking realm, and every time somebody bought a candle, I was like, "You just fed a fifteen year old boy." Because I need snacks. Okay. Like this is my (laughs) real life. So Mm -hmm. the main thing for engagement is transparency and your tribe will find you. They will find you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I just said to somebody yesterday, my tribe will find me because you know, you don't not have any engagement. I'm not going to change who I am and what I'm posting to get you to engage. I'm going to wait until the right people find it and are interested in liking and sharing and commenting. And let's talk about the importance of liking, sharing and commenting to get our posts, you know, to really support yeah. each other. I feel like that's another form of currency. We ask for donations, but yes. by liking and sharing somebody's thing, that's almost like another form of donating to their cause. Absolutely. You know, I post all the time in the group, you know, supporting is not always financial. I know we always talk about getting the bag. That goes back to mainstream goals and focus, but my true goal in this group is to is to relate to other women, relate to other people, people who have been like me, Single moms, no help. Single moms feel misunderstood. Just women who want to be empowered. Men who want to be with women who want to be empowered. Like this is, it's all the same nucleus. You know what I mean? Even though it may not feel like it. So in the Red Table Talk RVA, you know, it's people from all over the world now in that group. But my goal is to promote anybody in Richmond who has a business. Richmond, Virginia is an amazing city. Uh, You know, I don't know if you've watched the play Hamilton or just looked at history. We've got a lot of slave roots here and a lot of you know just rich history that plagues us at times and i just want to show people we are more than the confederacy we are more than those statues in spite of everything going on just in the main world there are people here who are still hustling and bustling and doing it the right way and networking and they want to grow and they want to support each other so i'm trying to give them a platform hey and i tell people every time i post on hey on my page if i'm sharing you it's because i love what you're doing I want the world to love you too. I hope you go viral when I post it. You know what I mean? But if it's not getting the likes you want, change it up. Let's talk about it. How can you engage with your people? Who are you? So sharing and highlighting others is is so key on top of being transparent in your business because just like you want to get 100 likes, so does the other person. So don't just go to your social media pages to see who's liking you. Why don't you go like some other people? You have to support to know what it feels like to be supported and then you know what support you want to have. 
And that represents us in the world, period, human beings. Like right. we live in a world of give and take, but we really mm-hmm. should be looking at how can we add value in all aspects of our life, not just what can we get value from, not Absolutely. taking it as a transaction, what can I get out of it, but what can I deposit? Absolutely. You know, there's a, a page I'm promoting this week trying to fundraise for a local youth football, youth basketball league uh, in the city who just got hit by COVID. And Red Table Talk is a page of, people who want to be empowered you know not everyone wants to give all the time but at the same time when you give back it it means so much i'll go on the page sometimes and i'll say i want to give 20 ladies lunch today so put your cash out below like you can engage there but if i say i need 20 of y'all to donate to someone else it's it's hesitant so definitely Mm. encouraging people we we gotta want to give back as much as we want to receive you know to whom much is given much is required you know but you're not giving so and, and we're stronger together if people look at it this way because like I'm launching a big campaign for October mm-hmm. and like we're asking for like ten dollar donations and we're trying to read a certain goal but I could have asked for a hundred I could have asked for fifty but right. by keeping it small if everybody does like it's imagine a little bit. I got two thousand Facebook friends if everybody right. gives ten ten dollars then how much would we really have made and listen if you give imagine what kind of experience I can give you like I'm trying to throw this party for y'all you know um. I tell people every time they, especially if you're a new business owner, please hear this. If you go to an event and there are vendor tables and you're networking, your next customer will nine times out of 10 be a business owner beside you. Don't worry Mm. about the clients. Don't worry about the customers. Worry about who you're at the event with. Who did you network with? How did you get there? What's the word of mouth? Post something on social media. Big them up for giving you a platform. Mm -hmm. Other business owners are your best clients because they get it. They right. know what it is when they see your craft and then you can in return talk to them about their craft. And and next thing you know, it's a collaboration or it's an inspiration. You know, we should inspire and empower right. each other. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. More than financial, for sure. More than financial. Absolutely. absolutely. Now, when we talked a little bit right before we came on, we were talking about social media breaks. You know, it's important to do all this engagement on social media, but I just came off of a break. Ooh, and I yeah. take breaks regularly, like at least every other week I take mm-hmm. a break. And a lot of times on a weekend, I push pause too. Right. Um, what's your your take on social media breaks? Right. So it, I feel like there are two two sides to this coin. Um, there's, I feel like you should have either, number one, uh, you move with intention when you go to social media, like only go to social media for positive things. That's a way to just align what you're looking for, look up some hashtags that are in alignment with what you want to feel and how you want to be that day or what you want to learn that day, or just take the full break, like just close it off. Or if you can't, you know, some people, my business runs on social media. Okay. We'll log off by five, treat it like a business, you know, log, don't log on before 10, you know, give yourself a boundary so that you can still live your life to a certain degree. You have to live to have something to take a picture of, you know, if you're, right. scrolling, if you're scrolling all the time, there's nothing to take a picture of there unless you want to show people you're scrolling. Um, so right. yeah, there, there's ways to move, but a break is absolutely necessary. One of the things I did in the group to grow when we first started was 60 days of healing. And just for 60 days, I just posted only inspirational things. And I believe I only posted like once a day because I don't want people to, every time they log on, Red Table Talk has a new post and now I got to go catch up because I do like that group. Give your audience a rest too, you know? Mm -hmm. They're busy Mm -hmm. as well. Acknowledging that you understand that helps them not feel the pressure. And then when you do do something, they want to support you even more. So balance, (laughs) big balance on this. Now, you you mentioned like searching hashtags that you like or you follow. And I think a lot of people out there really do not understand how hashtags work. You know, you'll see these long hashtags or many, right. many hashtags in one post. And so I've, I've worked with a few people on understanding, you know, how hashtags and using the same hashtag allows people to find it in the feed. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of using the proper hashtag yeah. for your business and following certain hashtags that you want to see posts about? Yeah, through my experience, when it comes to hashtags, you should just, number one, go research some hashtags. If you've never looked at them, if you've never paid attention to them, or if you've used one, just hoping you get people to your page, click on the hashtag and see what other people are posting. 
what are you appearing in the feed with? You know, um, we had WAP the other week. Uh, we all know about that song. <laughs> but WAP was actually a business name for like a whole nother business at one point. So when you go to the hashtag, <laughs> it's now their business is saturated because it also now has another meaning. So again, do some research on hashtags. Uh, see what aligns with you, see what's posting on what. Um, and, you know, if you really want to be seen, a lot of people will use this, uh, you know, the million hashtag, something like successful. Um, I tend to use something like successful in life, maybe where it's only 30,000 people posting or maybe 3,000 people posting. You want to be in alignment with people who are posting. If they're growing, then you want to grow too. So try to get their attention that way. You know what I mean? But the main thing is hashtag research. Just find something that's in alignment with you. And it's going to take some time. You, you can't right. just scroll with it. So really take your time and see what's out there because it's a lot out there. Right. And and with hashtags, you know, keeping it in alignment with your purpose, like what, like you said, everything with transparency yeah. and being authentic and real with what your purpose is for being on social media. Mm -hmm. What is your purpose with the cause that you're trying to raise awareness of? Right. And when we talk about purpose a lot, you know, on this show, we share your light. We talk about pain. And um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about some kind of painful experience that you've had to overcome to let people know the place of experience that you're coming from as you're talking about, you know, helping people in their businesses. You know, when it comes to places of pain, I've had, you know, so many. I feel like you start to think about it, you get bombarded with the things you've gone through. But one of the things that I went through that uh, probably gave me more character than I, I cared to ask for was just having... <laughs> My son's father's incarcerated and he's been incarcerated mm -hmm. uh, my son's entire life, all but 10 months. And, you know, in that space, having to uh, deal with someone who was in a space who couldn't really communicate in his best way or be his best self, um, having to tell my son, you know, we make mistakes and that's what it is. He may not be in the best space when he talks to you, but still allowing those 15 minute conversations and allowing a conversation with my son after that. Um, you know, I think we just rarely show the women who are succeeding, even though they have another parent who's incarcerated. You know, we talk about how strong the single mom is, but there are women starting businesses. There are women who are not letting that hold them back. There are women who are not bitter because they're not getting any form of support. There are women who are still praying for their children's fathers, hoping that they just find their peace of mind. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I want to change mm -hmm. the narrative on that and show that we can be successful and and not only not only just that we can be successful with raising our child but in our own selves we don't all harbor bitterness we don't all want child support you know what i mean at some point you acknowledge where your life is and you move forward and you raise your son and and you forgive yourself as a parent for knowing that you mm -hmm. did the best that you you could you know a lot of us I... are, at one point i worked in dc i used to get up every morning at three get to work at six, work all day and not get home till 7 p.m. I felt bad at some point because I had to go do that extra hustle. But it grew me in a way that I definitely needed. And thank God for family support. So just really, again, changing the narrative and showing what real life looks like for people who are really still striving. You know, right. I mean, it's not living off the system because of a certain stigma. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the one thing I want to bring light to, or one challenge. You know, it will be right. okay. No one tells you about, uh, you know, fatherless Father's Days. Nobody talks about that. We know it's coming. We know your dad isn't there, but the conversation that you have with your child or with yourself when that day comes, you know what I mean? Um, it's rarely talked about, and I think it should be right. 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 Absolutely. Because even for kids whose parents are not incarcerated, right. there are a lot of it's households that do not have the fathers. Even right. if we know where they are, I mean, the the presence is not right. a daily a daily presence. Right. So, right. And yeah. acknowledging the people who do step in, even though it's not a biological father. Like I said, Blacktop Kings and Queen, Coach Manny was, has been a great example, you know, to my son. And he didn't have to be his father, you know. So right. it's, it's amazing. Right. So support in your tribe is, is key. I'm telling you. <laughs> And, and when you mention that topic, because I was a coach for okay. most of my adult life, and I know that I was like another mom to a lot of a lot of my right. athletes. And there's a lot of young boys out there, we don't talk about it, that don't have mothers in their household, that's living with their grandmother or their aunties. Yes. So just recognizing that educators and coaches, or even just other people yes. in the community, there's so many people that we we built this village and we, we support our children, we support right. our youth, and we work together 
more than you know. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And, I, and I can understand, I can see how, you know, the quarantine has probably impacted that because now these kids are not going and seeing their coaches the way right. that they are used to. The person right. who tells them they can make it in life, the person who encourages mm-hmm. them and fills them up because some of these kids, I'm worried about who are in abusive right. households. I had a right. guest on a couple of weeks ago who said that she was sexually abused and mm-hmm. her teachers who found out and reported it. And during that interview, I thought, I was like, dang, what about these young ladies right now mm-hmm. who are not at school to where they can talk to a teacher right. about being abused at home? Right, right. Or or doesn't get the opportunity to meet somebody new, that guest speaker or someone who just stops in the class, you know, those things can be life changing. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Because it was on the day of a guest speaker that she said yep. that when she opened up about it. And so, you know, right now we have to be creative with Zoom right. calls. You know, still set right now you can get more guest speakers into your classroom than you could have before. Right. And, you know, that's the rates. A lot of people would be more willing to do it for free because they don't have right. to to you so reach out to people like myself Absolutely. or Cara. Yeah. You know, we'll I'm definitely guest speaking. Yes, me too. Sure. I'm doing guest speaking, doing vision boards, doing a lot of things yes. virtually that can help teams, help youth, help teachers. Because everything yeah. that we do for the youth is gonna help the teachers and the educators and the coaches as well. The teachers <laughs> need support right now too. Shout out to the teachers. We appreciate you. They need support more than maybe anybody. A teacher, like when I was a teacher and a coach, I was working from 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. at school at 6 a.m. for the first practice until about 6 30 p.m. See? Getting home 6 30, 7 p.m. every day. People don't see that side oh, of it, they don't true. understand it. And when I get home, the phone does not stop ringing because right. I, if this kid knows that I'm that other mother, that other parent to them, mm-hmm. and that's gonna you know, pick up or that's gonna help. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some self-care tips that, or what's your, your usual self-care routine that you would do that maybe oh, can help someone out there? Listen, my go-to self-care is to journal, like just writing mm-hmm. and getting things out and organizing and crossing it out if I need to, or uh, burning it if I need to. Sometimes going yeah. through, uh, you know, negative thoughts or things that I'm just done and healed from writing it down, returning it back to the ashes, just writing in general. That's my go-to. But I also make candles. Um, I, I tried to make candles at one point and, and make it a business, but this is another business tip. Just because you're good at it doesn't mean it needs to be a business. So mm-hmm. you, can just, you can just enjoy being good at it. So uh, I enjoy making candles for my friends and family and for myself because they get expensive. That's why I started making them to begin mm-hmm. with. So, that's my self-care, my go-to self-care for other people. If you're trying to find some self-care, really just sit down with yourself and say, what do I like? What mm-hmm. do I like? You don't have to ask the kids. It don't have to be kid friendly. Go find what you like and go do that. Give yourself permission right. to go do that thing. You know, Right, yeah. right. Right. And experience new things because we might yes. not even know what would help us, you know, know until we give it a try. Yeah. Right. Right. Might be a whole new love. Yeah. So it might be definitely trying new things. That's key as well. Right. Well, um, I want to encourage everybody, go ahead and share this video to your yes. page. We are giving so many tips on so many different topics, healing, yes. self-care, social yes. media exposure. You know, this 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 conversation has so many nuggets. Yes. That, um, <laughs> follow the career cheerleader. Um, yes. a little social media tip. You know, you put your little... Um, <laughs> yeah, a little Instagram at the bottom. It's, you in there. Placements. Yeah. It's all about placements, sis. <laughs> yes. And um, also, I want everybody to do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Rakaya Gibson on YouTube. I need to put the banner up, but yes, subscribe to Rakaya Gibson on YouTube subscribe. and hit the bell for notifications because we have so many conversations just like this one that brings wellness tips and yes. information that can help people. In the month of October is Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month, and we're launching a huge campaign. My 17 year old son passed away from sudden cardiac arrest, and mm-hmm. um. I have never really, really just gone into and shared mm. my whole story about it. And so I'm going to push myself to do that in October. Yes. But, um, we're, you know, a lot of organizations were coming together to raise awareness. So um, subscribe to the channel. There are videos about that. Anybody who has a child should know about sudden cardiac arrest because it does not always have symptoms. And Cara, with the Career Cheerleader, cheerleader make sure that you follow her on social media, that you subscribe to um, her also um, YouTube channel. 
The career cheerleader? Absolutely. The career yes. cheerleader on all platforms and the one cheering for you, the number for you on Twitter. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And um, we want to open it up for questions. If anybody has questions at this time, yes. um, wants to give any feedback, any questions on self-care, on healing, questions. Um, journaling, because that's another, that's a great one. I love to journal, Girl. meditate. Yes, I love it. go for walks. And like when you say, when you talked about the, the communing and talking to yourself and talking to God, like that is a form of self-care right there it to is. be in constant communication with the creator. It is. Well, it's to give yourself permission to be in constant communication, to give yourself permission to have the freedom to, to think, to dream, like just do it. Just put it in action. Right. And to be grateful, because when we think about like when I go on walks and I'm just like looking at trees, I'm looking at birds and I'm just like, God created all this for us. Girl, all that. Listen, I will I will forget my keys and I'll walk back knowing I'm in a rush. And I'm like, thank you, God, for just the moment of delay. I don't know what you saved me from. I don't know what you're putting me in front of, who you're going to put me beside at the coffee shop. Like just acknowledging everything is an opportunity, even the missed ones you think are missed. They're not. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, because you think about those times when you'll leave home late and then you'll see a car accident and you're like... Baby. Baby. Let me tell you one quick story. I went to the Mm -hmm. airport. I left the Central Standard Time and flew to the East Coast. Thought that I was still on on time was not. Went to my gate an hour late. Missed the plane, right? The plane Uh sat on the tarmac for four hours. I had to wait two hours to get on the next plane going to Richmond. I got to Richmond before the original plane. I, I just said, thank you, God, for the delay. Right. I, I would have been right. hot if I was on that plane. Okay. Okay. God, knows. God knew. He said, sit down and eat some lunch, sis. Don't you go. Okay. <laughs> so just be grateful. Thank you all for tuning in. We got Sharon. Um, yes. Hey, Sharon, sending you love. Jewel. These are two moms that I know who've lost their children. So, yes, thank you guys so much. Yeah, it's such a painful experience. Just child loss is unlike any other loss out there. um, This week, and we were talking about teams earlier, uh, rest in peace, Lil O. Uh, We lost a cub, me and some football moms. Uh, He passed away this week, 18 years old, and we're having a vigil for him Thursday uh, at the East End Rec. And we just want to give a face to these children. You know, our youth are dying a lot. Um, and when, when someone hears that they passed away, they don't think it's a health issue. They don't think that it's something else or just things went on. They want to label them something. And at the end of the day, a parent lost a child. So my heart goes out to y'all. My heart goes out All to right. Mario. We love you. Um, yeah. It's, do you, it's a do, pain. Do you, are you able to say what happened to O? Um, it was on the news. Uh, he was uh, pulled from the river. There was an, an incident. You know, and our children, they make decisions, but we, we, we love him. We know who he was. I know who he was as he grew up. Um, he lost his mom when he were young, was young, and me and the football moms have just always stayed in connection, and I love y'all. Carletta, Nikki, Car- uh, Courtney, Stacy, D. I I think I'm missing somebody, but I love y'all. Um, just those connections. It doesn't matter how we lost them. Um, it doesn't because the loss is a loss and it's painful. Period. 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 And, and, you know, we just want to, we're going to celebrate his life on Thursday. So my heart is okay. with the loss of your son as well. So, and I'll definitely light a candle for O yes. on Thursday, you know, yes. and, and say a special prayer for him. Yes. Um, yes. Mario, for sure. We love Mario. You. Yes. yes. And when we say, you know, when you, I want to go back, circle back to something you said earlier about prayer when we say we're going to take that to pray for someone, I was reflecting this weekend on God. And, you know, we say God equals love. God is love, right? But then God is also force and power. So when we say we love somebody, then that should be backed up by force and power. So what is it that we're creating with that love? So when we pray for someone, what does that prayer, when we speak to God, what is he speaking back to us to tell us to do for that person? Because praying for them is for us to understand how to move and support them within that space that they're Mm -hmm. in. Like you took your love and you all are creating a vigil and doing something for this mom to help her understand that she's not alone. His mom passed away, so his father. Oh, for his father. Oh, my Lord. But, still, but no, but still, it's just, yeah. you know, everybody's going through something. So when when a yes. loss comes in any capacity, uh, it's just a lot. Like I said, I've said rest in peace a lot this month. And, um, you know, I'm just praying for everybody. When I say everybody, I mean, we right. are all, life is short, y'all, period. Um, celebrated today. I just posted, give, their, give people their flowers today. 
You know, I hugged my son tighter when we got the news last week about it all, you know, um, because it, it could have been me, like the old song says, you know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, yeah, right. So, right. And I, and I, and I, I want to uh, just uh, applaud you for your strength and your bravery of talking about your story, because rarely can we talk about things when we're not healed. But your story will heal someone else as well, for sure. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got Teacher Glenn, thank though. you guys. Yes, Teacher Glenn, thank you so much for tuning in. And yeah, absolutely, we just talked about that again, staying in constant prayer. It's it's a time that we need it. You know, we can't right. make it by ourselves. We need our community and we need our God. Yeah, right. You know? Together is the only way we're going to get through any of this, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. and, and one other point that when you said like being a support, something that I know from the grief community, especially from a parent, what we talk about a lot is that people don't understand how long that grief lasts and how long we need support. But most of the yes. support dissipates after the first you know, month. So it's really important yes. to continue to check in with people after that, because Absolutely. that's when like it's so many people in the beginning. And then nobody after the first month. Right. So it would be good to like kind of phase that a little bit and right. take turns to be there and just sit with somebody. Just be there. Right. And don't worry about saying a cliche. There's no right just thing to say. Right. Just be there. Just be there. It's stages of grief. You know, you got your disbelief. Then you, you know, you got your denial and then you got your acceptance. But there's also just the moving forward day to day. Like I said, sometimes it's minute to minute. Okay. And we just have to right. be there for our people and ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We got a question here. It says, where's a great place in Richmond to relax and meditate in nature? Ooh, that's a good one. I might need to come. That is. Listen, um, in Richmond, there's Libby Hill Park. You can sit and overlook the city. Um, there's mm. also, um, hmm, I'd say probably just the river. There are a few spots on the river where you can go. And um, I wouldn't suggest getting on the rocks. The current can can do some weird things. But there are some waterfalls that you can view from some landscapes, some walking bridges that they have. So uh, anywhere along the river, Bells Isle is, is specifically one place they call it. Um, and then, you know, we have our parks. We, I think there's a, there's a local zoo as well. So that, you know, I don't know how much in nature you want to get. So if you want to feed some animals, go to the Richmond Zoo um, or just vibe in the city. You know what I mean? Richmond has a, a nice mix of architecture and and nature so you can walk down Carytown or in Cary uh, or Jackson Ward and still get the essence of the trees and and really a country feel right in the middle of the city so right and I love when you describe the waterfalls waterfalls are so healing to me aren't that girl I, I, I start crying when I see waterfalls sometimes like I went right. to Costa Rica in December mm. and it's a video on my YouTube page with the Costa Rica trip it's my healing trip because it was my first Christmas um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. holiday without my son and oh my gosh the waterfalls were just right. it's just a renewal you know, and letting mm -hmm. you know that, you know, energy flows like it's still currency. Currency is not just money. OK, it is a flow. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a vibe. It know? is a vibe. Yeah. It is a vibe. And traveling is a form of self-care, too. Ooh. Like you said, going to Jamaica, going to laying on the beach, Baby. just connecting with all of the, the, the things that, like we said, God has created on this earth for us, which are yes. reflections of paradise. So I love yeah. to travel. I, COVID, slop, COVID slowed it down, but I, I just traveled locally. So I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've visited some new trails in the city. Everybody was walking and on bikes. So, uh, you know, just as long as I'm moving is is a right. Way. So yeah, but I love right, that. right. Well, absolutely. Thank you so much again. That's Yay. this is Kara, the career cheer, career cheerleader. Yes. So follow her on all social media platforms. Yes, follow me. I am Rakaya Gibson, and make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. There are plenty of videos about healing, about Perfect. you know traveling, and also about sudden cardiac arrest as we go into October yes. with sudden cardiac arrest awareness month, so, so that you can be aware and. Um, Thank you so much. So is there a GoFundMe or something for the family that you created? Um, for the fundraiser. What is the fundraiser that you have on your page right now? The fundraiser on my page right now is to support Blacktop Kings and Queens and they're accepting cash app. It's dollar sign BTKQS, Blacktop Kings and Queens, 25. Uh, and they're just trying to keep their doors open from COVID. They had some months with no kids in their basketball camp, but they are a staple in the city. They are changing the city and the youth. So definitely supporting Coach Manny and Blacktop Kings and Queens. Right. Sure. And I'm, I'm actually, when we get off, I have a post that I was I already created that I'm posting about Black 
Um, we talk about black businesses, but not black foundations. And so I'm creating a list of all black mm. foundations so that we can start putting out other people like that. Because yes. like you say, when you look at some of the other organizations, they are, they get support, but some of the black organizations, some of the minority yes. organizations, we don't have the infrastructure built in to where we can have the support to continue to maintain right. our operations. So that is right. something really important that needs right. to be addressed for that organization and many organizations across. And we talk yes. about wanting to support our own, our own. That's a part of it. You know, we yes. have to step up and, and help the people who are helping our own. Yes. And I, I have proof. My son is proof that Coach Manny's program changes the lives of children in this community. He definitely yeah. stepped in. So, yeah, I love that. Not just black businesses, but black nonprofits. I love it. Ex ex absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right, Cara. Thank you so much, you guys. Again, you. follow Cara on social media. Sub subscribe to my channel, Rakaya Gibson, on YouTube. Yes. And we will keep bringing you content. Please support, guys, because this is this is a form of healing for me. You know, talking and getting information from other people to share with everyone else. It's a form of healing for us all. And it's a form of us all finding our way forward through this troubling time that we're experiencing. But we can make it through it together. So continue to share your light, Cara. Thank you so yes, much. And all you of so you guys much. share the light. Thank you so much, Cara. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yes. Thank I'm going to be so in much. Virginia to come and see those waterfalls. <laughs> I will. I will. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Continue to um, comment, guys. We will continue to respond to your comments. Okay. Tasha Gibson, great info. Go on to Cara's platform to support and follow. Thank you. And looking out soon for the list of foundations you'll be posting. Keep us Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for tuning in. Again, we're going to normalize mental health care and understanding that it's okay when we need a break. Take a break. And when you get your strength back up, come on back and share that light once again. Um, I have to do that. It's something that's really important for us all to understand that it's okay. All right. This was Share Your Light. I'm Rakaya Gibson. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Share your light. Be the light. Embrace the light. Peace, love, and light, guys.